Good morning, dear friends, and greetings, brothers and sisters in the Lord. This is a great day, and this is the day the Lord has made for us to rejoice and glorify His name and praise His wonderful name. We are still fresh in our thoughts and a meditation on the Lord's sufferings and then His resurrection and His ascension. I would like to take the next two to three days, a small Bible study with a number of references. So I encourage all of you who are listening this to sit with a notebook and pencil or pen, write down these references so that you can refer back and know what the Bible says about what I am going to speak. We have considered the events of the Passion Week days leading to Sunday, which was the Resurrection Day. And um, then we considered the joys of resurrection power. And I would like to talk about the power of the blood of Jesus Christ today in this small meditation. The blood of Jesus Christ is central to the New Testament concept of redemption. And the references I would like you to note down is 1 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 16 and then chapter 11 verse 27 and Ephesians chapter 2 verse 13. On the cross, Christ shed his innocent blood in order to remove our sins and to rec reconcile us with God. This is mentioned in Hebrews chapter 5 verse 8, and Romans chapter 5 verse 19, and Philippians chapter 2 verse 8. You see in the Old Testament the blood of animals but the blood of animals was only a temporary provision for the sins of the people. Ultimately, a man from humanity was needed to serve as a substitute for humanity. Furthermore, only a human free from sin could take the punishment in order to adequately and perfectly satisfy the demands of God's holiness and justice. Thus Christ came to earth and was born as a human so that he might satisfy the demand of God's justice and holiness. This is mentioned in Romans chapter 3, verses 25 and 26. He was God in flesh, the sinless one for the sinners. On the cross, Christ shed his blood, his sinless, pure, innocent, holy blood in order to remove our sins and to reconcile us with God. You see why this second person in the Holy Trinity had to take a human form and come down to this earth. What was the need? You see, as I mentioned earlier, the blood of animals could never remove sin or set us all free from the power and influence of a sin. And in order this to be accomplished, it was necessary for a sinless, pure, innocent blood to be shed. And since no human being possesses such a blood, because we all receive our blood from our fathers, and our Father's blood, and therefore our blood, 
are all poisoned by the virus of sin. And therefore it was necessary for God himself to take the initiative. And Jesus Christ who was in the bosom of God the Father and the co-creator with God the Father, the eternal one, he himself came down in the form of a human flesh and lived among us. And uh, as the Bible says, according to the words of John the disciple, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. And then in verse uh, 14, uh, it says, this word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory as of the one and only begotten, full of grace and truth. And here is the reason why he came in the flesh. In order to shed the blood, because God's command, God's law says, without shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. And yet, animals' blood or any other human blood or even angels' blood can never atone for the sin of humanity. Therefore, here comes the Son of God himself, pure and holy. Even in his earthly life, he never, never committed any sin. Remember, he possesses, possessed a human will. And he could have exercised his human will. But in anything he did, even dying on the cross, was according to God's plan and purpose. So he submitted his will to God the Father's will. And what was Father's will? The cross for his son. For the remission of humanity's sin. And that's why Jesus took the form of flesh and blood. He identified himself with humanity. And then he took upon himself the burden of the sin of the entire humanity. And the curses and the guilt of humanity all fell on him. No wonder why God the Father has to forsake him. He could not look upon his son while he was hanging on the cross with all this huge burden, a mountain of a sin of humanity. And my friends, it is all because of his love. God the Father loved us so much. He released his only begotten son. And when this son came down, he did not possess anything which he called his own. There was nothing. He didn't possess any home, he didn't possess any land, he didn't possess any money, any riches, nothing in this world. There is only one, there are only two things he claims that it was, they were his own. When he took the bread that day, when he sat with the disciples and inaugurated the communion for the New Testament church, he lifted the bread to God the Father and gave thanks. And then he broke the bread and he gave to the disciples saying, take and eat, this is my body. The same way he took the cup, gave thanks to God the Father and giving to his disciples, he said, take and eat, drink, for this is my blood, the blood of a new covenant. My dear friends, and my dear brothers and sisters, see the love overflowing. And the son did not care about his own comfort during those days. He denied everything, humbled himself, and he went to, the, to hell. This is love. And here we see the power of blood which is still drawing people to himself. As he said, if I, even the Son of Man, will be lifted up, I will draw all men to myself. How? By his power. We will continue this study tomorrow's meditation. 
the power of the blood of Jesus Christ. What the blood of Jesus Christ has accomplished. That shall be our meditation tomorrow. And meanwhile, this is the day the Lord has given you. Have a wonderful and good day of living for him and singing his praises and his greatness. Living in his presence, submitting our will to his will and let his will be done in our lives and in the church and in the world. Because God loves us. God bless you. Remember, he is with you. During all these days of struggles, do not be discouraged because God has arranged these days just for you and me to draw closer to our family members and together we may draw closer to our God whose love is beyond description. God's presence be with you. Thank you and God bless you. Heavenly Father, Thank you for your people. Thank you for all the friends who, who are listening to this message, this teaching. And may their hearts be moved by the thought of God's love, releasing his one and only begotten son, the second person of the Holy Trinity himself, taking upon himself the human flesh to be among us, to shed his blood and break his body. Let this love move our hearts. Thank you, Lord. Bless your people. Let them enjoy you. In Jesus' name. Amen. God loves you. Have a good day.